Hello and welcome to another Explorer video. Today we're taking a look at Blue Black Ninjas, which has gotten a lot of new cards over the last few expansions. The highlights being Kaito, Bane of Nightmares, a 4-mana Planeswalker that can also be played with Ninjutsu for one, a blue and a black. And then if we sneak it in, if one of our creatures attacks unopposed, it also won't be able to get countered by opposing counter spells, so that's a huge upside. And then Kaito during our turn is a 3-4 ninja creature with hexproof, so it can immediately hit the opponent if we sneak it in with ninjutsu, and then second main we can start using the various loyalty abilities, the plus one giving us an emblem saying ninjas we control get plus one plus one, so that also affects Kaito. The zero ability lets us surveil two, and we also get to draw a card if we manage to hit the opponent, so it can provide card advantage, and then a minus two gives us some creature removal, tapping a creature down with two stun counters as well. So yeah, Kaito does it all. How do we plan to sneak in all the ninjas in this deck? We're mostly using cheap flying creatures, and it doesn't get cheaper than Ornithopter at zero mana as an O2 flyer, so it can play it, even cast a one mana interactive spell alongside it, and then turn two attack, hopefully unopposed, to start sneaking in our ninjas. There's also the Thousand Faced Shadow as a 1 1 flying ninja, so also benefits from Kaito, and also as ninjutsu itself for 2 and double blue. So in the late game, we can still use the shadow with ninjutsu, maybe after picking it up initially, and then it can start copying or attacking creatures as well, which can also get out of hand. And then Mockingbird is kind of an honorary ninja and also a relatively recent addition. Can be played for x equals 0, just as a 1 1 flyer, can maybe still copy another 1 drop that's in play as well. And then later in the game, we can cast it for x equals one or two and start copying more impactful creatures that are already on the battlefield, including potentially the opponent's creatures. Then at 2 mana we've got another honorary ninja with the Flood Pits Drowner, a 2-1 Merfolk with Flash and Vigilance, so we can also play it in the opponent's turn, and when it enters we can tap target creature and opponent controls and put a stun counter on it, so this can be a very nice tempo play that can prevent the opponent from hitting us, and then we can hit them back, but we can also play it in our own turn if we just need to get rid of a blocker, and we can also pay 1 on a blue, tap the Drowner and shuffle it and a creature that has a stun counter on it back into their owner's libraries, so that can give us a more permanent end answer for as long as that creature still had a stun counter on it. But the Drowner is also great to copy with Mockingbird for instance, cast it for x equals 1 and now we get a 2-1 flying Mockingbird that can also stun an opposing creature when it enters, and the stun counters can also maybe synergize with Kaito's minus 2 ability. And then another ninja is the Moon Circuit Hacker, which has the cheapest ninjutsu for just a single blue mana, and then when it enters, if it hits the opponent, we get to just draw a card, otherwise if it hits the opponent, we get to draw and discard, so it can still give us a nice bit of card selection. And then a Satoru doesn't have ninjutsu himself, but still a ninja to synergize with Kaito, and it will also draw us cards if we ninjutsu creatures into play, so that also works out quite nicely. And finally, the Silver Fur Master, another anthem effect giving ninjas and rogues plus one plus one, and also discounts ninjutsu abilities, mostly relevant with the Thousand Faced Shadow, but once you start copying your uh, Silver Fur Master with a Thousand Faced Shadow, you'll see that those two also have excellent synergy together. And then rounding out the deck, we've got some cheap interaction. Fatal Push, also very good in this deck, since we're constantly enabling Revolt by picking up our creatures with ninjutsu. And then a Thought Seize for a bit of hand disruption. And then our mana base also gets access to Mutavolt, which can turn into a ninja for just one mana, so that can be another cheap threat. Don't want to play too many copies, since we do have some color-intensive creatures we need to cast, but still a great addition for the deck. And then lots of blue-black dual lands. Ottawara can also occasionally be channeled to bounce something back. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We've got early Ninjutsu Enabler, Kaito, some removal. Yeah, I'll keep. So turn two we could put in the Hacker and then replay Thousand Face Shadow. Opponent's gonna have a look. So either taking Kaito or the Hacker takes Kaito. So we will get to draw a card at least. And then Fatal push away to keep clearing a path for the hacker to connect. Ninjutsu is also a great way to enable revolt on Fatal push for what it's worth. And now a Mockingbird, okay. So start by attacking. And we get to connect. 
And a Drowner's not bad either. One Fatal Push can go. And then, sure, we'll play Swamp. And I think just pass with the Drowner available. Opponent will push the Hacker now. And a Slasher. Right, good one to keep locked down with a Drowner if possible. Ottawara can also bounce it, so what are we thinking? Can also use the Drowner, or make another copy with Mockingbird first. I actually don't mind copying the opponent's Slasher here. A Flying Slasher is pretty scary. So we can go ahead and attack. And damage happens. And then do I keep up Otawara or play Satoru? With Fatal Push, I'm not afraid of really getting comboed out. Since we can block and if they remove my blocker, Fatal Push has been enabled. Shieldress Edict now. Can get rid of the Shadow. Which was a window for me to maybe Fatal Push, but we can also take the hit from Slasher at the moment. That opponent also have the Blood Letter for the combo. So now they attack, I jump, Fatal Push is a Blood Letter, and that should be game. Now there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got Mockingbird to maybe enable a ninjutsu. Yeah, this seems fine. And then Gloom Lake will make blue initially, until we find Swamp or Island. And that's the beauty of Mockingbird in the deck. Sometimes you just play it as a one-drop to enable ninjutsu, sometimes you can copy something more exciting. And then by picking it up, it's also going to be easier to replay it later when it is more impactful. So, what are we thinking? I think I still like Hacker, just because it's cheaper and it allows me to replay Mockingbird. Otherwise, if our opponent has a single spot removal spell, our entire engine kind of falls apart. Put on to red black with harvester, so kind of your mid range deck. Okay, so swamp enables a gloom lake. So we can attack. Ninjutsu in the silver fur. And replay Mockingbird once again. Yeah, sadly in Explorer, Silver Fur is two mana to Ninjutsu, so it's not quite as broken as it is in Historic, or you can do so for just a single mana. Hacker the draw. So we do have quite a few options here. If I were to attack and our opponent blocks Master, I can Ninjutsu another one to pump it. So that would work out fine. Alright, opponent maybe fell for it. And then we can let damage happen. And I could just cast another Silver Fur at this point. Or play Mockingbird, copying a Silver Fur Master and have a flying version. Also sounds good. Another option it would be to just pass with Drowner ready to tap a creature down, then we can pick it up to maybe do it all over again. But we might just be able to attack for lethal next turn. 
Just noticed Vongavoth, so opponent is more of a reanimator deck after all. Luckily for us, they couldn't reanimate on turn 4. So could main phase a master now. And smash. And a bit of triumph or upon making sure to cast it before they declare no blocks. Otherwise we could technically ninjutsu here to pick it back up. But uh, yeah, that will happen. So Mockingbird down. Still take eight. Could also ninjutsu a hacker. Does mean dealing less damage here. Right, opponent found a fatal push as well. That's too bad. Now do I want to put in a hacker? Would draw me a card, essentially. Yeah, that seems worthwhile. And then we can still play the Drowner at instant speed. And Mutavolt is an extra threat. Hive Hunter's tapped, and after a Drowner. So if they don't have another removal spell, and I animate Mutavolt to play Silver Fur, we would be attacking for lethal. Ornithopter's a bit late to the party. Alright, and that'll do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is lacking a ninjutsu enabler, so we would just be casting a hacker, which is not where we want to be. So I'll take a mulligan. This is a little bit better. Probably have to ditch one Muta Vault. And then Ornithopter is the perfect enabler. Although, opponent can take away Kaito, so we don't get to have our fun. Still play Ornithopter, can play a tapped Watery Grave as well now. And then hope Ornithopter survives, so we can sneak in a hacker. The Bank Buster points towards a more controlling deck. Okay, so sneak in hacker, and then can still play Shadow as well. And replay our Ornithopter. Can also consider picking up the Thousand Faced Shadow next turn, so we can maybe Ninjutsu for 4 mana on the following turn to make copies of creatures. I see Waste Not, so it is a discard deck. At least Ninjutsu isn't discarding anything. If I attack with this hacker, it is optional to draw and discard, so I'm probably not going to. Otherwise we enable Waste Not. Ninjutsu. Pick up the Shadow. So we've got two triggers. The first one is the fresh hacker, which can just draw. Finding a Mockingbird, and then I'll decline. So now we can play a Mockingbird for x equals 1 to make a flying hacker. Although again, the ability pretty awkward in the face of a Waste Knot. Sunken Citadel lets them activate Field of Ruin more easily to maybe blow up the Muta Vault. Gonna be a shieldred that's also gonna punish any card draw. Alrighty, so just attacking with my flyers here. Yeah, it's 
going to be hard to beat Shieldred without removing it. But I'll still draw here. And Drownor could be an answer to Shieldred. Might want to keep one Ornithopter in hand in case they make me discard two so I can keep the Drowner. Bangbuster draws, gaining life. And we get to untap. Alright, so what's the plan here? I guess we'll start with taking our draw step, find a lane. So if I want to get rid of shield roots, I have to play Drowner in the opponent's turn. Otherwise it's not going to have a stun counter by the time we get to activate the Drowner. So that means just attacking with my flyers once again. Decline to draw cards, sadly. And then now I'm probably fine to empty my hands and hope they don't have a board wipe. Bonon channels Takanuma. And they are actually playing Deadly Cover Up, so that could be very bad. Activate Sanitarium, I'll just discard Swamp. Bangbuster draws, gains life. And then now I can try to tap down shield roots or I can wait until end step in case I have a second shield root in hand. Bonus not attacking. Take my turn. And then I can immediately use the Drowner here. So I don't lose life, find a Shadow. And then our opponent's likely using Field of Ruin on Mutavolt anyway. Can have a look with Thoughtseize first. Alright, opponent's just on all lanes. So... Let's see here. Still want to avoid discarding with Waste Knot in play. Not quite attacking for lethal. Yeah, I'll get in with Mute Vaults. Even though, again, I doubt our opponent's activating Castle at 14. But yeah, if they use Field of Ruin, I think I have an island left to play Shadow afterwards. Bono not even going for it. I'm going for it after damage. So maybe they forgot. Okay. So, opponent should technically be at 5. And I'm just hoping they can top deck another sweeper. They get a redraw with Bankbuster. Goes for Sanitarium, which will make them a zombie token as well. Could have potentially drawn two cards thanks to Waste Knot. Go for the Throat Hacker, that's fine. Draw with Bankbuster now. So they have two blockers, taking four in the air. And a Shieldred's Edict. Making me sack the hacker token. Alright, so they're still alive here. 
Thoughtseize. I guess I can cast. Take a bankbuster. So is there any point in making these trades? Yeah, I guess that's fine. We've got Ornithopter to sack to another Shoulders Edict anyway. Okay, opponents at one, facing double shadow. We're empty handed, but they can maybe still get value out of Sanitarium. Planeswalker would have been nice to get on the battlefield. Opponent loses a go blank. So they need sweeper or two removal spells. And that's a field of ruin. And a Shieldress Edict, Ornithopter to the rescue. So yeah, that two extra damage they took from my Mutavolts could actually end up mattering here, otherwise they might have gotten one more turn. But our opponent goes out on their own terms. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keepable hand. Turn one, I think we start with Shadow in the hopes of Putting in the hacker, and then we can thought seize as well. Opponent playing with Yorion. So, step one attack. Ninjutsu. See what we draw, since that might affect whether or not I want to thought seize or replay the shadow. Another hacker makes me more likely to want to replay the shadow. And then we'll wait a little bit longer on Thoughtseize. Opponent on what could be the Enigmatic Incarnation deck. With the new Overlords. And our opponent can cast a 2 mana Leyline Binding, missing blue for a 1 mana version. Okay, so step on Thoughtseize now. Might see a fatal push. Take out hacker, that's fine. Opponent does have the namesake card. They also have double green to play Overlord. But they can also play Fable, so they have a turn three play lined up no matter what. Fable, I can push the token. So I think I take the incarnation here, which is a scarier card. Attack Ninjutsu Hacker, and then replay Shadow once again. Kaito is going to be pretty exciting. Can apply a lot more pressure, and can Fatal push alongside it, so hoping they play Fable here. And they do. Alrighty, so push your token... Attack Ninjutsu. And then next turn we can even Ninjutsu the Shadow for 4 mana. We'll draw on this card. I've got this. And what does Kaito do? Emblem versus draw card. Kind of blanking the emblem. We'll make it easier to present lethal next turn. Can tap down another blocker with a drowner. So opponent needs removal. Beanstalk will draw. They can now cast a one mana leyline binding. So that might be their answer. And it looks like they found it. Or they're just reading Kaito, and yeah, they come to the conclusion that they're dead. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing maybe a few more ninjas, but can draw with Hacker, thanks to Ornithopter. Can even Fatal Push turn one alongside it. I'll try it. So I can take two damage to keep up Fatal Push, basically. Seems worthwhile, since mana efficiency could matter. Opponents got their own Ornithopter, so this seems to be the mirror match. Alright, I guess we'll uh, push Ornithopter, never mind, they've got a second one. 
Yeah, there's no point in pushing now. Can wait for them to ninjutsu and then push. But of course now our opponent can also block my ornithopter, so I don't get to put in the hacker in the first place. So it's going to be a weird staring contest. I could have tried to double push and then ninjutsu, but that seemed like a waste. Opponent also happy to sit back. So now we can flash in the drowner. Okay, so go ahead and attack. And ninjutsu. Bonon's got the Brazen Borrower to bounce, sure. So in that case, can play Mutavolts, keep up Drowner, or keep up Double Fatal Push. Yeah, I guess I'll keep up Double Push, since I'm more likely to need to take out a creature that's a Ninjutsu. And then it's possible I'll need a second push. Opponents go to Kaito. Okay, just hard cast. And it's the uh, original Kaito, not the one with Ninjutsu. Makes a Ninja token. I got on the it's going to phase out. So we'll uh, Drowner, tap down Ornithopter. And then I can push the Ninja token to clear a path. Attack Ninjutsu, I want to say the hacker. And draw, find another Drowner, and replay Ornithopter. So we can block Ornithopter to prevent Ninjutsu. Okay, so it does get to draw for free now. Now this is a juicy secret. And they also have Brazen Borrower available at instant speed. It's gonna be a fairy. That one we can drown. And our opponent scoops it up. Yeah, they're just too far behind on tempo. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Ornithopters to enable ninjutsu. Couple good payoffs. And some interaction. Could keep up Fatal Push if we pay two life. Yeah, that seems worth it. And play both Ornithopters in case they remove one of them. Pwn under red black. And it's gonna have a look with Thoughtseize. Is it going to be Master or Kaito? Kaito is gone once again. I think that's the third time today. Alright, now can go for Master or Hacker. Kind of prefer Hacker. Since that will start drawing. And then I get to keep a Fatal Push for what it's worth. Or am I drawing to another 1-drop? Mockingbird. It's going to be a little bit more exciting if I can copy, let's say, a Silver for Master, but I can also Ninjutsu the Master next turn with Mockingbird and then replay it. Now I'll still keep a Fatal Push. Opponent naming Demon. So they might be on the Blood Letter combo. Alright, another Hacker's nice. And then opponent might have removal, so if I ninjutsu a creature, it's getting destroyed. But uh, let's give it a shot. Drawing into a land would be useful, so I can still play a 2-drop. Ooh, I think our opponent destroyed the wrong hacker. This one will draw for free.
Right, and I'm out of alt, so I can still play Mockingbird X equals 1, which will copy the hacker. And sure, I'll play Ornithopter, not sure if it matters. So now, can attack. Not gonna send in Mutavolt just yet. And they might remove the Master now. Okay. Still get to draw and discard a bunch. Might be time to let go of Ornithopter. Usually don't need to. I think I still like Fatal Push since we can easily enable Revolt with Ninjutsu. So then I guess Odawara can go and play Tapped Shores. We can send in Mutavolt and Ninjutsu the Master. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. And we get to rank up here as well. Alright, we're on the draw. Can definitely keep. Can even double Ninjutsu on turn 2, thanks to Ornithopter and Mockingbird enabling it. Facing a green devotion strategy. Alright. Thoughtseize, I think I'll wait a turn on it since we mostly want to take their reach creatures like Cavalier of Thorns. And I guess we can make a flying Alanor Elves here. Which is kind of fun. So I might still go for double hacker next turn. If our opponent goes for Nykthos next turn, they could already cast a Cavalier, so that's the risk of not thought seizing them here. Yeah, I'm still more in favor of double hacker. And then turn after, I can thought seize, plus maybe play a Mockingbird copying a hacker. But yeah, Cavalier would be unfortunate. Draw two, so I replay Ornithopter, and then next turn go Dark Slick plus Thoughtseize. Drowner can also maybe tap something down that gets in the way, and Mockingbird can also copy the Drowner, so we can maybe keep up the pressure. All right, luckily no Nykthos, and it's gonna be an invasion. So the devotion still climbing. Put and found Kiora. And another Mystic. They can immediately transform the invasion if they'd like. But opponent goes face. Alright, Fatal Push. I wouldn't be able to cast if I want a Thought Seize, which I think is more important here. So let me start there. Opponent does have double Cavalier, so... Probably won't be able to stop... One of them, still worth taking. And then I'm fine offering the trade for the elves. I suppose what I could do is use Drowner in their upkeep to tap down an elf, hope they don't draw land, and then they can't play the Cavalier. Damage happens, no ninjutsu. And what do we get rid of? Probably a land. And next turn I could double Fatal Push the Elves, but not right now. But yeah, maybe that's the plan. Just hope they don't draw a source to cast Cavalier, and then next turn contain the Elves. And then I would be playing Drowner now, and next turn double push. Can still play Mockingbird, copying Drowner. So then Shadow needs to go. Alright, let's hope this works out. 
I guess I don't strictly need to Fatal Push double elf since um, it will still have a stun counter on it. So we can maybe wait a turn to push the second elf. Ah, opponent goes for Kira. So no Cavalier this turn. They found another Mystic. Kira can also untap an elf to make an extra mana. So Cavalier is probably still happening. But we're also putting the opponent on a clock here. Take out the Mystic. Hit you for six. And I want to keep Drowner in play so I can compete with Mockingbird potentially. Kaito could be relevant too. So Helen can go. So I could Mockingbird tap down the troll and then still push an elf. Yeah, that might be good enough. Could also make a flying troll actually, but I want to try and stop the cavalier. So yeah, with an untapped land, our opponent can still cast Cavalier by using Hura to untap the elf. But they'll still be facing a lethal once we ninjutsu Kaito. Alright, Nykthos, that's a scary draw, so now they actually have enough mana to play a Cavalier and maybe cast more stuff afterwards that they draw into with Kiora. So this could uh, turn out to be a bit of a disaster. They millstorm the festival, although they cannot flash that one back. They do have a lair available. And they're gonna get in there for five. Going face. Alright, that should do it then. Attack with everyone. And Ninjutsu Kaito could have also played at main face to tap down the cavalier. Either way works. But yeah, the Nykthos draw could have maybe still turned it around. Sweet. Yeah, getting to see the power of Floodpit's Drowner with Mockingbird. Some of our honorary ninjas, but they complement the strategy perfectly. So yeah, blue-black ninja seems to be the real deal in Explorer, a deck that can come out the gates pretty quickly, but also has a good mix of interaction and card advantage, and some of those non-ninjas are kind of the glue that to hold the deck together, Mockingbird being an early enabler for ninjutsu, as well as a way to maybe copy some of our payoffs, or maybe the Drowner to lock something down. So yeah, very happy with the deck. It also has a lot of angles that it's attacking from between planeswalkers and creature lanes. So even against control, if they have a board wipe, it's not necessarily game over. And if you're playing this in best of three, you can bring in spell peers out of the sideboard to stop some of those more impactful non-creature plays. So yeah, if you're a fan of ninjas, I can highly recommend this deck. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.